Hey guys, so I'm just back from the port. The good news is we got our shipment. So to catch up to how we got here, this product, this particular product I bought from a supplier in China through Alibaba that uh, our agreement was that to keep the cost down, they would ship it and I would pick it up at the nearest port. That was sort of the verbiage. Uh, contractually, I don't know, who knows. Anyways, it is what it is. So. The first thing that happened is the nearest port was not available. So I don't know if that's true or it's probably not. It's probably cheaper at the other place. But anyways, they ended up shipping it into Boston. It's about 65 miles one way. So that in and of itself wasn't a huge deal. I wasn't going to worry about that. One thing I find is you got to pick your battles. And this business can be really frustrating if you let it frustrate you. So I don't sweat the small stuff. Anyways, my product is made. I'm happy with it. They send me pictures. Everything's good to go. They're going to put it on the sheet. He sends me the, I don't know, I guess the confirmation with the ship number and the, you know, bill of lading, whatever. So, off it goes. About two weeks later, I get an email, like a frantic email, of like, oh, you haven't done the ISF filing. I didn't even know what an ISF filing was, let alone that I had to do it. Anyhow, it's a, basically, it tells customs and whoever else that, this is the item that's on the ship, here's how much it costs, here's where it's, where it's going. It gives it a tariff code so that they can tax you appropriately if necessary, etc. I don't know if you can do this yourself, maybe you can go to customs and do it yourself, I don't know. I ended up just going online and Googling ISF filing and ended up with an outfit that did it for me. It cost me $125. Um, so anyways, $125 I wasn't counting on, like I said, I don't sweat the small stuff. So, at that point I figure I'm good to go. Then I get an arrival notice along with a bill for $284.50. So a couple of people asked, so I'll just tell you what was on that bill. So it's an arrival notice that says your, your, um, here's who the shipper is, here's your name, your bill of lading, container number, all this stuff. And then it says that the Boston Freight Terminal and gives you some information on that. It also breaks down the weight of your shipment, how many, uh, can, you know, you already know all this stuff, number of packages, whatever. So then it says, Original bill of lading required, which is okay, I have that, and they sent that to me. And then it says, check required, all charges must be paid prior to release of cargo, no personal checks. Huh, so this is all a surprise to me. So the bill is $284.50, and here's what that's for, they're freight charges. I assume these all have to do with the port. They seem to be like port charges, so I'm not going to say maybe that the, the people in China knew this and were trying to get by me. I think they probably assumed I either knew this or was experienced enough that I would know that, uh, which clearly was not the case. So there's a CFS docks fee of $16, a chassis fee of $3, a fuel surcharge of $10, a facility window fee of $35, a CFS loading fee of $70, which I loaded it myself, but whatever, a wharfage of $30, Documentation of $65, destination delivery charge of $30, and AMS filing fee of $25. So, anyways, I tried to figure this out because I wasn't expecting it. 300 bucks, not that big a deal, but it kind of is. Now, now it's starting to add up because I had 125 now I got another 284 so on and so forth. So, it took me a couple days, then I had to get a cashier's check to send to them. And I had to send in the original bill of lading. So after I did all that, then they finally sent me a release. Which I don't think I have a copy of it. But anyway, oh yeah, here it is, release order. So all this is is the same thing, but it says it's paid. So I emailed the gal that sent me this release order and say, hey, I'm new. So what do I do now? I just go pick it up? And she says, uh, yes, you go pick it up, and then you'll need to pay any storage fees that may be due or uh, customs charges. So, okay, so this was last week. Like, so today's Friday. That was like Friday of last week, maybe. So I really could have gone probably Friday of last week, but really, realistically, Monday. And then my son was off school this Friday today, so I figured I'd just wait, and I would take him with me and give me a hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me a hand, and we'll do a Friday. So anyways, off we go. So we go uh, U-Haul because it was the weather was a little iffy today. Again, that's something that I could have anticipated. I can't blame that on anybody else. I could have taken my truck and it would have fit and it, it turned out the weather was fine. But anyways, I rented a U-Haul van. It cost me $117, add that to the total, uh, and 60 bucks for gas. 
So anyways, we read the U-Haul, we drive to Boston. So I was a little apprehensive, I didn't really know what to expect. So we drive to Boston, I go to this address, there's a whole bunch of like big semis lined up, and then there's like a little office. So I go in the office, wait in line with all the truckers who obviously, they know exactly what they're doing. I go up there like Joe Schmuck and go, hey, how's it going? I've never done this before. Please be nice to me. Uh, I give her all the paper. I go, hey, get this huge stack of paperwork. I don't know what you need, what you don't need. So she's okay, fine. She starts ripping through it. We need your ID, all that. We do all that routine. So she goes, oh, well, where's your customs clearance? And I go, okay, I'll bite. Where's my customs clearance? She goes, well, you don't have a customs stamp on your paperwork. I go, okay, how do I get one? She goes, you don't have one? I go, you just told me I don't have one, so how do I go about getting one? Again, I've never done this before, so help me out here. So she goes, okay, you can go to the customs office. She tells me you have to drive there how to get to the customs office. I would have tried to film some of this, by the way, but I figured f filming at the, the you know terminal in Boston and the customs and everything else would probably not be a good idea, so I did it. But anyways, so, and then she says, oh, let me see if there's any charges for storage or whatever. <laughs> She goes, okay, you have demurrage due of $660. So I go, what? She goes, yeah, demurrage, $660. It has to be cash. We don't take credit cards or anything else. So I go, okay. Fortunately, I brought a couple grand in cash, but I just didn't know what I might expect. At this point, like, everything's been a surprise to me, so well, I might as well be prepared. So anyhow, demurrage is storage. If they called it storage, it would sound like a total ripoff, so they call it demurrage because it sounds better, I guess. Nobody told me that, that storage fee, like when your stuff hits, here's the lesson on this, when your stuff hits, you gotta go pick it up right away. Now in my case, I was a little too disorganized to really be able to execute on that. Now I could have picked it up, like I said, last Friday probably, realistically, which would have saved me seven days of storage fees. The storage fees are $60 a day. Bear in mind, I only had 12 small boxes, it was like one pallet, and it's 60 bucks a day after your free couple day grace period. I don't know what the grace period was. But anyhow, Okay, fine. So she goes, can you pay that? Yeah. All right. So then she sends me off to customs. So we drive over to customs. I go to the customs office. There's a customs guy there. He ding the bell. He comes over. He's not a very nice person, although he turned out okay, but he's very cranky. So he goes, what, what, can you, what do you need? I go, oh, hey, how's it going? I got all this paperwork. I've never done this before. Please be nice to me. Um, I'm trying to pick up some products I ordered from China. They're at the port, but I haven't got a customs clearance. He goes, well, what are the products? So I tell him. So this would be the equivalent of if I said, they're shoelaces. And he looks me straight in the eye and goes, for what? And I go, well, for tying shoes. Duh. And he goes, it's not what I mean. What are you going to do with them? I'm like, okay, uh, sell them? Is, I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, you're going to sell them. So they're for resale. I go, yeah. Okay, well, you got to have a broker if it's for resale. If it's a commercial purpose, you have to have a broker. And I go, okay, well, I don't. Sorry. And uh, he goes, okay, well, I'll help you out. So he ended up taking my paperwork. He goes back. Ten minutes later, it really wasn't that big a deal. He comes back with it all signed up. I didn't even have to pay anything. So that was cool. So anyways, he comes back, gives me the paperwork. We go back to the port off. So now at this point, I got all the paperwork I need. We go into the window. I pay the $660, hand her the paperwork. Five minutes later, she hands me a slip, go out this door into the warehouse, hand it to the guy. I did. Five minutes go by, he brings a pallet over, you open the door, load it in your truck, and off you go. So from the point where I had all my stuff together, it was pretty easy. So would I do it again? Yeah, if, if I had a, somebody that I would try and be clearer with my supplier about what my responsibilities are. So if I literally just had to go pick it up at the port, yeah, that was no. That part of it was very simple. So if you're on a tight budget, that part was no big deal. I actually drive up there. I would have been had I had all the right paperwork. I would have been in and out of there in less than 30 minutes. It really was not a big deal at all. So in my case, I didn't save any money because the storage fee killed me. So I had an extra 80, uh, 125 for the ISF filing, two, 284 for the um, whatever the bill from the shipping company, 660 for storage. 117 for the U-Haul and 60 bucks for gas. So that one uh, cost me a little bit. Lesson learned. Uh, but anyways, hopefully I can help you avoid some of that on your next item. That's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.